Good morning to all my friends and family, and welcome to Jim's 5am Club. I'm just going to do a 360 to show you where I am. For those who don't know, I'm at Fingal Bay, at the famed Fingal Bay Spit, and it's a glorious winter's day. It was a bit cold this morning, but it's a lot milder now and a lot more pleasant. And a beautiful, a beautiful place. Beautiful place indeed. So what I'll do is I'll go on a walk and talk and do a book summary. And the book summary that I've chosen to go through this morning is entitled Power Relationships. Power Relationships, and it's by dual authorship of Andrew Sobel and Gerald Panas. Gerald Panas sounds like a Greek name, the second one. So uh, let's see where it leads us. And just in case you're not aware, um, there's a, a spit, a sand spit that traditionally joins Shark Island to Fingal Bay Beach, but last year, and this year and last year, with all the big storms that uh, came through, a lot of the sand was washed away. So whereas in the past at, sh at uh, low tide, there would be a sand spit that would be able to uh, join that island over there, where you can walk across and go all the way across to the uh, lighthouse and the residents and see the whales frolicking just close to the shore there. Um, for the time being, that, uh, that sandbar has been washed away and we can't enjoy the connection with the other side. And to swim across or walk across is fairly dangerous because lots of people, believe it or not, have lost their lives here have come back after walking across the other side and it, uh, it was higher tide and there was water across and people have tried to wade across, swim across and have been washed away and lost their lives. So whatever you do, don't try and cross that, uh, that little bar here. Um, and we'll just have to wait a year or two maybe until things come back, hopefully, to how they once were. So, uh, just me on the beach today. It's Tuesday, the Tuesday after the long weekend. So what we'll do is, uh, I'll just go a little bit closer to that uh, um, uh, water, uh, where you got both, both bodies of water. So you got the, the body of water on this side, and you got Fingal Bay joining as one, and uh, uniting in that little uh, mass of rough water there in the middle. So what's this book about? Power Relationships. So what the author that kicks off this book with is a, uh, a nice little quote where they say that each time you refuse to compromise your integrity, it gets stronger and more resilient. So, uh, a very, very powerful point, especially for young people who are distracted and are tempted to do things, um, thinking that it'll make them better and better people. But the author here reminds us that each time you refuse to compromise your integrity, it doesn't say each time you, you refuse to compromise, but each time you refuse to um, compromise your integrity, it gets stronger. Your integrity gets stronger, according to this author. And you, as a person, become more resilient, able to deal with the pressures of life. And another interesting point, and a profound point for all of us to consider, is the following point, where the author says that each relationship, each and every relationship, that we've had in our lives, so all the people 
that we have befriended, all the relatives that we've broken bread with and had time together with, each of those relationships, good or bad, moulds our future and shapes our future. So it's important to understand that nothing goes wasted. The good and the bad enables us to learn more about ourselves and it helps shape who we become and um, the important thing is to I guess know how to leverage it know that it's happening and know how to make the most of it because some relationships as we as we know are good some are bad but some are powerful some relationships some people come into our lives which make powerful relationships and they are the people listen up here they are the people who push you to your best they are people who nourish your strengths and uplift you in hard times so the key message is that we have relationships in our lives some are good some are bad but some are really, really powerful because they change us in many ways for the better. So the author then goes on to encourage us to build relationships and not to fear relationships. Wherever possible, the author says, talk to people, talk a lot with people. Don't be afraid to ask when you need something, even if it seems like a long shot, because you don't know. You don't know who you're going to come across who's going to be one of those powerful relationships that you need in your life. To put into perspective, the author says that most successful people, most successful people have about 12 to 15 powerful relationships throughout their career. So you've got to be open. You've got to be open, ready and willing to leverage these powerful relationships and uh, to ask the questions and don't be shy. People, even busy people, and more importantly, the most busy people in our lives are the ones who are most willing to help us, to help you. So don't be shy. Don't be uh, a, um, a, a person who out second guesses other people and who talks themselves out of uh, powerful relationships. Ask the question and uh, be willing to unite with some people around you and you don't know who these people are going to be they just come out of the woodwork sometimes but they're the people who make the biggest impact and the biggest difference of your life they're the people who are able to remove the sand just like this bar over here they're, they're the people who are able to help you remove the barriers in your life to enable you to connect, to unite with your goals, with your dreams, and with other things in your life. So it takes vulnerability. It takes action on your behalf. So the author then goes on to their second formal point where they talk about the fact that you don't need to be afraid to connect with people who are dissimilar to you. You don't have to be with people all the time who are the same as you. Sometimes being with somebody who's completely different um, can start to uh, ignite that flame in you. So um, the author invites us to connect with as many people as early as possible in our lives and to build a network of people uh, who are like you. 
as soon as possible. So it's important to understand that you don't need a big, big network. You don't need thousands of people in your network. And last, or this year actually, I went through my Facebook network and trimmed down my friends from 700 friends to down to about 400. Because I sat there and I, I sat and thought, I said, well, out of all these people that I've got on my Facebook, who are friends of my Facebook, how many people do, do I connect with? How many people um, do I actually have an active relationship with? So I decided to trim, trim it down wherever possible to, um, to make it smaller. Because what the author here tells us is that a group of people doesn't need to be big. And you're better off having a small group of people in your life rather than having a massive group of acquaintances who you may not know and may never get to know. So it's good, it's important to have a group, a small group of good advisors, mentors and collaborators. People that you can work with, and that you enjoy their company and that you know that they're committed to partnering with you for your growth, development in, in all aspects of your life. Remembering that it's unlikely that a, a really successful person will bring a new person like you into their circle, into their close circle. We've got to be realistic as well. Some people have sex appeal, some people have charisma and are able to break into new circles, new, circles, new social circles. But most of us don't have those gifts so what the author is saying, and it's a very, very valid and powerful point, is rather than trying to break into other circles, you're better off kicking off your own circle, starting your own circle of people, and focus on people like yourself with similar interests and values. It's hard trying to break into new circle of friends and we Greeks, especially we Greeks, are very clicky. We've got our group of friends and we just protect that group of friends and don't let others come into that group, which is a bit sad, a bit unfortunate, but uh, there's nothing much you can do about it. That's interesting, I'm just looking at a helicopter there just on top of Mount Tomari. It's a big helicopter and it's lowering something onto the mountain there. I might go up there later on to see what it is. Quite interesting. Don't know what's happening there. I hope there's no uh, incident, but we'll find out on the news later on in the day. So uh, the bottom line and the last point to come out of this book summary from this author is that we all need to try and become the powerful relationship for some other people in our lives. So take it upon yourself. Help other people reach their goals and believe in them to uh, help deepen your connections. The sad thing is, and I've seen it over the years, that there are far, far too many people who uh, just are, are too afraid to connect with people, and they're too afraid to connect with people at a different level. Which means that you're never ever going to realize the potential of those connections or of those friendships, because as I said, your fear getting too close to people, your fear of opening up, being vulnerable, your lack of uh, authenticity is going to be the biggest barrier that it's going to hold you apart and not allow the sand to come into this area 
as, a, as, a, as an example of a metaphor to join the two people or to join yourself to other groups, other cultures. So the key lesson from this author is if you want to build powerful relationships, a power relationships with people, you need to form the relationship with them and focus solely on them, on how to help them with how the relationship, without thinking of how the relationship that you're forming is going to help you. If you have selfish needs and selfish intent, you're not going to be able to leverage your powerful relationships. Because powerful relationships, according to the author, depend on you being unselfish and having an unwavering belief in others and help others and, uh, reach their ambitions um, as a parent, as a cousin, as an uncle, as a partner. You need to believe in the others in your life and to help them. So that the last point that I want to make from this book is that we need to do good. We need to speak well and we need to expect nothing in return in order to form powerful relationships in our lives and in other people's lives. So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club where I come to you from the flooded spit here at Fingal Bay and I can't wait to go across there one day with my granddaughters because I want to share a story with you. One day I was on the spit here and I found a big beautiful, a big beautiful shell and I decided that rather than take the shell home to my granddaughter Annabelle who was but a baby then, I would bury it over there near the track, near a rock, so that one day we could come back together and walk the spit and discover this treasure that I've buried over there and have some fun with her. So I don't know how many years are going to pass before the sands do come back to the spit area here where we can safely and freely walk across the dry sand at high tide, at low tide, sorry, and uh, enjoy that moment with Annabelle. And I hope to enjoy it with Elizabeth and any other grandchildren that I have, hoping that I have health, hoping that they have health, and hoping that their parents are alive as well and in health as well. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'll turn the camera around. That's one of the advantages of using Facebook Live, that you can access both cameras at the same time. I'll finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and most importantly, Let's take some lessons out of this book entitled Power Relationships by Andrew Sobel and Gerald Panas and see where it takes us, where it leads us and to uh, make it the most. Because as we said, all relationships in our lives are great. Some are good, some are bad, but they all add to our resilience. They all shape are and who we become but the most important thing of all is to understand that we do get an opportunity every now and then to share a friendship to share a relationship to share a love with people that becomes a powerful a power relationship that changes us and shapes our life for uh, for now and into the future so take care everybody, yasas, zagapao.
and I look forward to coming to you again from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment where we can be the wind beneath our wings, where we can learn from other people's experiences.